Hello and welcome to you, another Doctor's Assistant 1 video. Today I'm doing a review of Doctor Who Remembrance of the Daleks. Um, how ironic that at the, a day ago or so, um, what is it, uh, Remembrance of the Daleks turned uh, 30, 30, 30 years old. So it's, yeah, 30th anniversary sort of thing uh, a day ago or so, which is kind of ironic. Um, the main reason why I'm reviewing this, however, even is um, because I flipped through my uh, playlist of classic Doctor Who episodes that I've reviewed and was astounded and astonished that I <laughs> had only reviewed uh, lately um, uh, Battlefield and that. However, I wanted to try and rectify that, but I know that moving forward um, I might not get around to doing as many 7th uh, episode reviews as I would like to. However, I am considering... Um, buying some more 7th Doctor uh, Big Finish audios soon anyway. So firstly we'll go through the packaging. You've got Sylvester McCoy there in the bubble. Uh, Sylvester McCoy years 1987 to 1989. Uh, PG, two discs. Um, also this is the special edition as well which comes with way better significant artwork uh, and that of Sylvester McCoy there. Um, two Imperial, no yeah, Imperial Daleks even, uh, standard Imperial Dalek, the Special Weapons Dalek, which is a fucking badass of, uh, Dalek design. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the action figure anymore. I used to, but then it got stolen in my caravan and that, which had loads of my action figures in. Um, and then the Special uh, the Supreme Dalek of the Renegades, the van, giant explosion there. So that's McCoy there, and the sort of, uh, not the mothership, but the sort of ship thing that lands in the school. To entertainment, BBC, uh, Remembrance of the Daleks, 7th Doctor there, Doctor Who logo there. You've got the bio there, as well as the special features, which, because it's a special edition, comes with a lot more um, stuff, just extra content and gubbins and whatnot. Uh, the runtime, as well as all the legal guff, and the strip of um, uh, uh, screenshots from the episode. On the inside you've got better disc artwork as well as a uh, Davros uh, sort of thing uh, which looks at Davros as a character including I Davros as well as all of his uh, and some of the big finish stuff which is a rarity really with bonus feature stuff as well as well, going from Genesis through to, I think, uh, Remembrance. I don't know if they go further than Remembrance, but... Oh, well, yeah, they might do, but, but just with the Big Finish audios, like I Davros and some of the other uh, McGann stuff. And then you've got the standard uh, Disc 1. Well, not standard, but Disc 1, but the Special Edition cover, or sort of design, which is, again, better than the standard one, which was just Silver, di uh, silver Disc. And then you've got the Writer's Notes as well, uh, which... Uh, quite insightful to the behind the scenes stuff. <sighs> now onto my thoughts about the episode. It's a absolute amazing story. However, I don't think much like most, not all, but most of 80s Who, I feel like this one is very fanservice-esque, fanserving, uh, fanservice uh, pleasing and, and, and has a lot of fan service even and by that I mean um, sort of references and nods that only really hardcore Doctor Who fans will understand which is kind of the detriment to this story and as I just said before quite a few sort of surrounding episodes of the era i.e. the 80s and that um, and considering that I'm a big Who fan and that I uh, admit that unfortunately as of this recording anyway one of my biggest gaps is 62 so when they're doing quite a lot of references to Unearthly Child which I haven't seen um, I'm not always getting all the references but even so it does still add quite a lot to the mysteriousness of Sylvester McCoy's uh, Doctor, he is phenomenal, he is stellar in this, no pun intended, um, you know, the stellar manipulator, or oh, the Hand of Omega, which, the Hand of Omega is a cool concept, but it falls a little bit flat for me in execution, in the sense that I don't fully grasp what it is, but, yeah, like, is it just the thing that, like, manipulates stars then, or does it actually help the Time Lords travel in time, and how so. Like, it's never really explicitly explained in a way that makes sense to me, at least. I don't know if that's just me being stupid or what. Um, however, what is executed phenomenally well is the Dalek uh, factions, the Imperial Daleks, which look 
uh, really posh and really sort of aesthetically pleasing and that with the white and gold design however I much prefer the renegade Dalek design at least the standard ones but I do really like the special weapons Dalek uh, I've got a bit of a soft spot for that one because one I had the action figure at one point in uh, my collection as well as the fact that I just think it's a badass because it can blow up like three renegade Daleks so it's a fucking powerhouse basically um, and that and it's just a unique design really isn't it um, you know, again, Sylvester McCoy's performance here is phenomenal and or stellar, you know, he's very comedic, you know, with the unlimited rice pudding, you know, sort of thing, uh, very sort of, uh, almost Ninth Doctor-esque with his sort of brunt, sort of, uh, what is it, uh, brunt sort of inability to be bothered with the, the military and the humans. Uh, and their stupidity for the most part. Ace is really cool in this. Uh, she has an awesome moment where she gets to beat up a Dalek with a baseball bat. That's always a highlight for me on this in this story. The action in this is just fucking amazing. Like absolutely 10 out of 10 for the action purely. The action like the uh, pyrotechnics is just out of this world. It's almost like Michael Bay meets Doctor Who um, and that and if that sounds like something you'd like then watch this episode um however it is kind of funny seeing some of the daleks in one of the episodes sort of uh, wobble about on uneven surfaces out in the london area and that that was funny to me the music's quite um catchy and and really adds uh another layer to a lot of other what could have been other what could have been dull, otherwise dull scenes adds another layer which is something that i often forget about uh, saying and mentioning in these reviews of Classic Doctor Who that sometimes the music is really good, sometimes it's not, but in this, in the case of Remembrance of the Daleks, it's really good. Like the eerie music that plays, keyboard music, piano y music, even that plays when the uh, girl is over there, creeps me the fuck out. <laughs> and that creeps me out. And um, yeah, I, I mean, the Daleks are really good in this. However, the biggest ele elephant in the room is probably Davros in the sense that. He's only in part four and I'd rather him either be in it more or not at all really because when he is in it he kind of overshadows the Daleks and it becomes the Davros story but because he's in only in part four it feels like he is in part four all of part four and then you kind of forget about the Daleks almost which is a shame because up until that point they've been the main point of focus um, and that Terry Malloy gives a phenomenal uh, sort of performance and or stellar performance as uh, Davros here and that for the for the part that he's in the one part that he's in and that and he plays off Sylvester McCoy and Terry Malloy play off each other phenomenally and superbly um, and that but again I think it's just a case of I'd have rather him being in it more so sort of like half the story or three parts two or three parts or just not at all in this story it it kind of comes down to a similar sort of thing that happens with some of the time war episodes in big finish that i've listened to which have um uh which were written by john dorney where basically the daleks are either in it a little bit at the beginning or a little bit at the end in his stories but just not in it that much then just have them not be in it or have them be in it a lot more you know instead of this weird half house thing um what else? Uh, the side characters, I love the side characters of uh, Alison, Rachel and group Captain Gilmore, you know, uh, <laughs> and that. Uh, they're phenomenal, they're basically the Seventh Doctor's uh, sort of uh, unit, basically, even though they're the countermeasures team, I think they're called, and that, and they're a really cool sort of almost evolution. Not a replacement, but definitely a sort of spiritual successor and our evolution of unit. And if the show had continued on after season 26, I think we could have maybe seen them again. And that, I know they're in big finish, but still, like, they're a really good, strong uh, side characters that I'd easily put in the pantheon of Doctor Who's greatest side characters, you know. Um, and that, because when I think of Classic Who, sometimes I don't think of them having great side characters. Or some of the new series, you know, like, sometimes... Uh, episodes fall flat on the the side characters or the side or the supporting cast aren't great but here that's not the case the supporting cast are phenomenal here music's great um there's that one scene with the, the standout scene of this episode would be the you know 
the boulder scene in the cafe or the cafe scene with that black dude talking about the ripples and that and 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 the uh, boulder and every decision makes bigger ripples that uh, hit the banks and that. the bigger the decision the bigger the waves and that you know a really amazing sort of speech that Sylvester McCoy's doctor gives but it's not proper played up to be really grandiose it's just sort of him casually sort of talking to this almost stupid sort of random dude that he's just met and um but he's talking about like this most heavy-handed sort of cosmic uh scope of a of a sort of uh conversation and that and the guy's just like yeah whatever just get on with it you know when the doctor has like almost the the weight of the universe on his shoulders and that um but yeah i mean the action again the the action is just phenomenal and it's a fantastic story again i think my only points of uh points uh, negative points would be uh for lack of a better term the davros thing like either have him in it more or less uh and that or I either have him in it more or just not at all um secondly uh the second thing would probably be the fact that it's not accessible to newcomers to doctor who even though it's a dalek story and thirdly i I don't know. I, I I don't like some of the bad guy side characters. They're kind of they kind of fall flat for me, and that you know, um, and, and that and also you might not like the story if the, you're not a massive fan of like deaths in Doctor Who. There's a lot of deaths, and I mean I like how uh, Sylvester McCoy's Doctor just talks. Seventh Doctor just talks to a Dalek and it explodes, and like it's like oh my god, what <laughs> you know. Um, you know, it it's quite there's quite a lot of questionable things here, you know, like the doctor is quite mysterious, quite different, and that adds quite a lot of mystery and, and depth and intrigue to the character, but then he does some questionable things about, you know, uh, you know, like blowing up Scaro and, and the Davros's spaceship and all that, but I don't know, I mean it, it works for me and that, but yeah, I mean overall I'd give this story like easily a ten out of ten. It's it's a great uh, Dalek story and a uh, great series opener really when you think about it for season 25 so yeah thanks for watching comment rate and subscribe